Well, happy Super Bowl Sunday, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and that's great for the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs, two teams that seem to have gotten their shit together, unlike the Dallas Cowboys, because we're still here trying to get back to the Super Bowl. We've heard Jerry Jones saying that the damn the torpedoes, we're going all in. Um, and we don't know if that's actually just more Jerry Jones bullshit telling us what we want to hear or if they're actually going to do something about where they are. If they're going all in, we all recognize. We, in the YouTube community, and I'm going to say... The YouTube community for the Dallas Cowboys is unlike anybody else. We got more Dallas Cowboy YouTubers that give you their opinion. You know, um, it's funny because um, Okoye Media on, on Twitter, somebody had tweeted to, to them. Somebody's got like 30 or 40 uh, followers or whatever that I don't know why you guys watch film because it's not like the Cowboys are paying you or going to pay you. It's not about getting paid, although you do make money, actually, from YouTube and Twitter and these things like that. Um, it's about putting out information. And see, here's the thing that's good about having a difference of opinion. You want to get as many opinions as possible to make the best decision. You don't want to have everybody who just agrees with you and just follow along. And it's better to listen because there's so many you know some people can't stand me and that's cool but i can guarantee you that out there there are people that will fit the narrative or fit the situation or the style that you will like but i recommend trying out them trying them out give them a look see if it's somebody you like because you might find somebody that you don't think that you like that you end up loving and it's good because it also Quietly, surprisingly enough, you'd be surprised at people who actually watch. C.D. Lamb admitted yesterday on on the podcast and things that, you know, some of y'all out there, you know, you're going a little bit deep in things, you know. And I remember, to my surprise, one of the things that hurt me so bad last year, oh my God, it hurt me so bad, because having played the position of us finally getting a guy that I thought was going to be really good for us. And I think had he still been here, he would have. But another one of those mistakes the Cowboys made was John Ridgway. And to my surprise, he friended me on Instagram and actually said, thank you for showing me some love. My family enjoyed your videos talking about what I do and how I do it. So there's multiple reasons to go through this. And besides, after a while, you know that the, the, the media that works directly with the Cowboys, they can only go so far or else they're going to cause problems where they're not going to get the access. They can't put things out there that others can that aren't tied to the Cowboys, so to speak. So we're sitting here dealing with all in. Jordan Love basically pointed out, your linebacker sucks, so we knew we were going to run the ball. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of reading between the lines on that, but he basically said you had a, a corner. He said you had a, a secondary guy as a linebacker. We knew your secondary's good. We're going to run the football. It's not rocket science. We've been telling you guys that for a long time. And understanding that they are able to run the football. Understanding San Francisco is able to run the ball with Christian McCaffrey. Understanding that Kansas City with Pacheco, is able to run the football. We don't do those things. So one of those areas that you have to say the Cowboys need to be all in is either drafting a running back or getting the free agent. We're hearing that Austin Eckler, that Harbaugh, may be wanting to bring him back. He's a free agent. They want to bring him back. That's a potential target that the Cowboys may have been looking at who would probably be less expensive than, say, Saquon Barkley. Another one that we were looking at would be Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs would be a little more expensive than Eckler, but I look at Josh Jacobs and say he's a more dynamic back. 
the Raiders now are saying they'd like to bring him back at the right price. And see, here's where things happen. Last year, the pendulum swung, and it swung too far. Running backs were completely disregarded. You would think they were going to do away with the whole position, but what we realized is running game is very, very important. You look at the playoff teams, you look at the ones that are standing, you look at the good teams in football, you look at, say, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo, they realize because they're seasoned, they have a great quarterback in Josh Allen. But when you throw the ball all the time, Josh Allen's going to turn it over. Second in the league in turnovers with 22, behind only Sam Howe. They realized we got to change what we do. We need to rely on the more the ball more, running the football, and getting a balanced offense. So there's a happy medium between having the lights out running back and spending a whole bunch of money versus nobodies. The problem, of course, when you pay a lot of money to one guy is if he gets hurt, you're screwed. So that's where the NFL has kind of gone through, and the Eagles have done well with it, running back by committee. We tried that last year, but we didn't have that bruising back that could run between the tackle, that, that game-controlling type of running back. So if those two guys are going back in, and the Cowboys are actually going all in, there is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry may be the one that they end up doing if they're actually going all in. Although Derrick Henry does have a lot of miles. He's had some injuries, but that's the type of guy that the Cowboys would go to. A guy who's past his prime that they figure we can get a bargain for. Another one that's out there that may be interesting, of course, will be Saquon. I'm not really sold on Saquon myself because I look at the history of his injuries. Now, that's not to say that he couldn't be Christian McCaffrey because Christian McCaffrey with the Carolina Panthers after signing his deal was injured quite a bit. He goes to San Francisco behind that line and he has been healthy for the most part for the two years that he's been there. So maybe that could be the Saquon situation, but Saquon, is definitely looking for the bag. Let's play this clip here and go in a little bit deeper on Saquon. Get there last year. Saquon wasn't willing to budge. Saquon, you're going to be 27 years old. That's the number where they'd say, hey, running back, this is where they kind of fall off the cliff. 27 years old, right around there. To me, it seems like it's headed towards him hitting free agency. Headed towards free agency. What do you think of that, Harry? Yeah, I love it. Uh, for Saquon Barkley, I understand you want to be close to home, but for a guy in which we all believe he deserves the contract that he deserves for what he meant to the New York Giants and his football team, sometimes it's okay to just walk away, right? I think he should end up in Houston with the Texans, with C.J. Stroud. We see Christian McCaffrey and what he means to the San Francisco 49ers. It's the same mm-hmm. offense. You just think about how dynamic C.J. Stroud and company could be if they had a guy like Saquon Barkley that makes that offense even more dynamic than it was in his first year as a quarterback and also D'Amico Ryan's first year as a head coach and Bobby Slowick first year as an offensive coordinator. You know, it's fascinating because we sit here and we say, which team could use Saquon Barkley? The answer is every team oh. could mm-hmm. use Saquon Barkley, and yet no one will pay him the amount of money. The, the running back position has just found mm-hmm. itself in this place. Tagging him again is still a possibility. Yeah. So, like, the, the reality is, like, it's not so clear, hey, he's going to enter into free agency. Tagging him again, I mean, that's probably what is going to eventually happen. That I would be ugly. The number of teams that have regretted resetting the running back market with their running back is much greater than the number of teams that are like, yeah, we're glad that we paid this guy yeah. all that money. And so because of that, doesn't mean they're not valued or they wouldn't help nearly every team in the National Football League. It's... Do you Mm -hmm. want that contract three years from now? You most likely don't. Does it matter in the locker room? Like, we've heard some giant players, Kayvon Thibodeau and others, suggesting, hey, what they're doing with Saquon here isn't right. Does that actually make a difference to the Giants? Will will it have any impact? I think guys in the locker room talk about it. Like, you you know, like guys in the locker room, like, you know who the guys you really respect as players. 
And I'm sure in that New York, you know, Giants locker room, they, they, they have a profound respect for Saquon Barkley and everything he means to that organization. Think about you go out there and pay Daniel Jones yeah. all that money, and yep. then Saquon Barkley is like fighting to get paid? Come on. One last thing. The state of Texas, no state income tax. I know, Saquon, you're tired of playing, paying for it up here. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep a lot more of your money, boss. <laughs> what, about them, what about them Cowboys? Yeah, he's not a lot. Of Cowboys, know. listen, I mean, there's not a team in the league that wouldn't be made much better by having Saquon Barkley. We have a bonus one. We oh, have a here bonus. we go. We're going to oh. go down to the Pro Bowl. Let me see it. We're going to go down to the Pro Bowl. Oh, I would turn guys. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Everybody say they can go out here and throw passes and hit these targets. Look at D.O. Yeah, D.O. D.O. hitting the three. I see D.O. hitting the three again. Oh. But watch D.O. He going to hit the four. The four is coming up. Hit that four, D.O. Do it for the people. Boom. Oh. Look at the four <laughs> right on target. Do it for the people. Here go the ten for the win. Dan Orlowski, y'all. Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. So, Dan Orlowski finally getting some glory in the NFL. All right, guys, we'll see what happens. Um, the thing that's crazy is today is the 11th of February. This month, there's only 29 days. Legal tampering begins on the 11th of March. We have one month and counting. The Cowboys are going all in. They got a lot of work to do between now and then. Oh, we haven't even gotten a, got a defensive coordinator yet. There we go. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace.